Good morning and welcome to DIY Ace. Today I am saving myself £85.5 by home building a DIY data and server cabinet. So I had a few options for this cabinet. So rather than starting from a uh, simple plain sheet of plywood, I've actually gone for a kitchen cabinet. This is a wall unit. Um, it's made of 18 mil strong board. It's a melamine finish and I'll come on to that in a second. Uh, the difficulties with that, but it's an 18 uh, mil melamine on top of chipboard. It's a nice heavy unit. It's designed to take a lot of weight and a lot of abuse over many years. Um, wall mountable, it's got all the fixings within it. Uh, 600 wide, 720 tall and about 300 deep. So it's the perfect size for what I needed uh, for this unit to go on the wall. Um, it's uh, ridiculously easy to build. I mean, this whole thing took about 10 minutes, uh, but that said, once constructed, did need a bit of fettling. So I've stuck in a shelf a divider and I've also cut in some basic cable management uh, holes so that I can get everything looking as clean and crisp as possible. As I say it's made of melamine and the only real issue with these um, is that painting them is not quite so straightforward. It's a chipboard with a plastic coating on the top of it so you'll need a particular type of primer. If you go for a straightforward wood primer you'll find it'll wash off. Certainly water-based one will just wash off uh, and won't stay on there very long and it'll chip rather easily. So what you're gonna need to go for is a shellac uh, based primer. Now this one is Zinsa uh, B-I-N. It specifically states on the back of it, suitable for painting kitchen cabinets. So uh, recommended on that one by uh, screwfix.com if you look at the reader review. So I'm gonna have a go at that uh, in a second and get that coated. Now I did key the surface um, to start with. I just put a very light rough uh, brushing over with some very fine sandpaper um, just to give it a little bit of a key on here. It doesn't need a lot, it says on the tin you can paint straight onto uh, anything, uh, hard ceramic, glass uh, and uh, as I say melamine, but I gave it a little bit of a key just to get it going. Once primed, I've put two coats on here and given it a good 24 hours. It says 45 minute recoatable, but frankly, I've given it 24 hours just because I was otherwise busy. So it's nice and solid on there. So to smarten up the unit, once I've got the white primer all over it, I'm gonna go with a black line on the inside, white on the outside, black on the inside, where the racking system's going and where the loose uh, items are going at the bottom. But I am putting a couple of accent colors in here. I'm going with a red panel behind the um, fiber optic connection and the hive system, that's the central heating control system that's wireless uh, and then I'm putting a yellow panel behind the Wi-Fi access point and the Western Digital NAS drive just to give it a little bit of a colour. It is inside a family room, a TV room here so I wanted it to look a little bit more interesting than a mere black rack. So for the rack itself I'm actually using these standalone rack rails. They come in a pair. Uh, they were uh, less than 10 quid from Amazon delivered which is a great result actually and they merely screw into the sides here. And then it's much the same for the other side. But what I am going to put in here is a uh, small washer uh, in between the rail itself and the wall and the uh, timber, merely because I need about another millimetre or so of, um, or about a millimetre less in space than I had on there. They were just slightly too wide. So I've put the uh, washers in here just to give me an exact 48 and a half centimetres between the backs of the rails, which is uh, what is required for fitting in, as we can see. So as we can see, what I have done there is I've put those in so that I can get the items in here with yeah, the right spacing. Next job, get it up on the wall. Well, that's uh, <laughs> kind of all right. God, it's heavy. Um, I'm pleased I'm putting in this number of uh, fixings in, actually. It's um, slightly apprehensive that my kids will end up climbing on the sofa and trying to climb up here, but we'll see how we get on. Uh, 
There we go. Now it is time to fill up the rack. So I've just installed the power supply unit, the two cable management brushes, also the power supply cables that feed the three components that are in the bottom of the unit, and also the Cat5e cables that go to it. So now I can install the rack itself. So we need the power cord to go in first, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to get to it. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna need, I think, to be a little bit dexterous with this, because it's reasonably heavy, and it's, of course it's a bit unstable, it's back heavy. Let's see how we get on. There's one. So now that I've got the uh, switch in there, I can start connecting up these patch cables. What I'm gonna do is just, for uh, mere ease of cable management, put the lower ones in here coming out of um, the lower port. So number two, that is going to be the wireless access point. Number four here is the central heating system. And then number six is going to be the NAS drive in there. Uh, and ultimately, those are the only three that are gonna be coming in from the lower point in the cabinet here. The rest of them coming through the data management hole, the, um, leading off to the rest of the network that's going in shortly. Uh, will come through the top brush and into the points at the top uh, and the remaining empty ones down here. So that is essentially where we are if we tidy up this brush. Right, above this one then is going to be the next brush, which will sit neatly up here. Then last but not least, the uh, vent at the top. Now this is uh, two purposes really. First and foremost, first and foremost, I wanted just a bit of um, ventilation at the top. The heat, the, the, the switch here doesn't give off a lot of heat, but it does give off some. It certainly uh, gives off enough heat that I just want to let it dissipate somewhere. It's passive cooling in there. There's no fans or anything like that, but. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that the airflow around the back here, and I've got vents you'll see going around the side, so a bit of airflow going through there, and the heat will rise and come back out the top, should be more than sufficient here. So once I've gone about installing the rack contents, I've moved on to the yellow and the red decorative panel. This has got the Wi-Fi access point in front of it, and the central heating control, and also the fibre modem in place. So overall, I'm thoroughly delighted with the way this has turned out. I'll give you a quick rundown as to what I've installed. Uh, on the bottom here, we've got a Western Digital MyCloud EX2 Ultra. It is a two bay NAS drive. It takes up to two 10 terabyte disks in there. Uh, operates for me as a network attached storage, pretty straightforward, but also a Plex media server so I can get audio through the house and to my mobile phone while I'm out. We've then got the BT wireless access point. Uh, on the left hand side, we've got the fiber optic modem. Now this yellow um, fiber optic goes all the way through to the switch outside, we've got a full fiber to the home setup here, which is very different from a fiber to the cabinet. So we get full um, thousand megabit per second uh, broadband coming in here, and that leads in turn obviously up to the switch. And then at the bottom, we've got the hive system. Now that is the central heating system that controls, uh, yeah, the heating system and also enables wireless control of it from mobile devices. Um, up the top here, uh, rather straightforward, we've got a couple of brushes just for cable management. It also gives me the capacity uh, both here and up here to replace those with something else if I ever want to expand the unit. We've then got a pretty straightforward six uh, unit uh, power display. We've got surge protection in there, which is great. Uh, and then we've got the main crux of it, and this is what I wanted to get in, uh, the 24 port gigabit switch. So it's running at full gigabit capacity, not 10 gig. That will come at some point in the future for me, I'm sure. But at the moment, we've just got the three items at the bottom connected uh, into there. But we've got a full 22 uh, network point uh, installation going into the house and we've got the cable management hole on the side there to bring it all in and they will come out the top brush and into here you can see the powers working the flashing lights the data light and then the one underneath is telling us it's connected at a thousand megabits per second uh, and then at the top we've got a uh, 2u so a two unit uh, vent in here now there's no cooling here it's just a passive uh, unit it just 
um, uh, 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 sort of cools itself down through heat dispersion. Um, works brilliantly, I'm absolutely delighted with it. Next video, if you want to subscribe, please, will be the installation of the 20 plus network points around the house, all feeding back into this unit. Overall then, I'm delighted with it. It saved me about 85 and a half quid over the cost of buying a full-size cabinet to go hanging up on the wall here, all pre-built. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. It gives me the capacity to expand it and uh, alter it in the future. And uh, yeah, thoroughly good job.